Have you noticed that we give better advice to friends than to ourselves? This is known as Solomon's Paradox and uncovers a fascinating twist in human psychology that is a surprising part of how we think and can be a secret tool for making our own lives better. Abraham Lincoln led a nation wisely but struggled with personal depression. Mahatma Gandhi worked for peace but had complex personal relationships. Albert Einstein formed groundbreaking theories despite a turbulent private life. Winston Churchill was a brilliant wartime leader but struggled with his personal finances. This is Solomon's paradox in action, which refers to the phenomenon where people are better at solving other people's problems than their own. This occurs because we think more clearly when we are not involved in the problem. We can use Solomon's paradox to our advantage and help us improve our lives by teaching us to think about our own problems like we are giving advice to a friend. This means trying to see our problems from outside, like a person who is not involved. This way, we can make better decisions for ourselves, just like we do for others. Ever wondered why we instantly like someone based on one trait? This is called the halo effect, a phenomenon that affects our judgment without us even realizing. Think about Cleopatra, the last pharaoh of Egypt. Known for her stunning beauty and charm, these traits cast a halo that influenced how people perceived her intelligence, leadership, and political skill. It shaped her legacy and helped to navigate her reign in a male-dominated era. The halo effect is a cognitive bias, where our overall impression of someone influences how we feel and think about their character. Essentially, if we see someone as good-looking, we're more likely to attribute positive qualities to them, like intelligence or kindness, without solid evidence. Understanding this can transform our interactions and decision-making. For instance, when we're making new friends or choosing project team members, realizing the halo effect can encourage us to look beyond first impressions and discover more about people's real abilities and personalities. By recognizing the halo effect in our daily lives, it can teach us to look deeper and appreciate people for who they really are, not just for the first good thing we see. Ever wondered why small things can sometimes feel like the end of the world? This phenomenon, known as the focusing illusion, reveals why. During World War II, soldiers on the front line reported feeling happier on battle days than on days off. Why? Because their focus was solely on survival, making every other concern fade away. The focusing illusion is a cognitive bias that makes us think whatever we're focusing on at the moment is the most important thing in our lives. It's the idea that nothing in life is as important as you think it is while you are thinking about it. Understanding this illusion can help us a lot. For instance, next time you're stressed about a work deadline, by shifting your focus to the bigger picture, you can reduce anxiety and gain a more balanced perspective. So, next time you're sweating the small stuff, ask yourself, is it really as big of a deal as I think? Or is it just the focusing illusion at play? Learn to shift your focus and improve your life one thought at a time. The streetlight effect is a phenomenon that reveals a curious aspect of human nature that will change how you approach problems in your life. Did you hear about the drunkard searching for his lost keys under a streetlight? Not because that's where he dropped them, but because that's where the light is. This funny anecdote highlights our tendency to search for solutions where it's easiest, rather than where the answer truly lies. The streetlight effect is a cognitive bias that causes people to only consider the information that's easiest to find, often overlooking valuable data that requires more effort to obtain. This bias can limit our problem-solving abilities and decision-making processes, leading us down a path of least resistance rather than effective resolution. Understanding this concept can dramatically shift your perspective. For example, if you're struggling with a personal goal, consider whether you're looking for solutions in the most obvious places, simply because they're easy to reach. Maybe the real answer lies in a direction you've yet to explore. By understanding the streetlight effect, we learn to look further than the easy spots, finding better answers in unexpected places. Have you ever clung to a belief, even when evidence suggested you might be wrong? This stubbornness is often a result of belief bias, a hidden force shaping our judgments and decisions. Charles Darwin introduced his theory of evolution in the 19th century. Despite overwhelming evidence, 
society largely dismissed his ideas because they conflicted with established beliefs. Belief bias occurs when our evaluation of the logical strength of an argument is influenced more by our pre-existing beliefs than by the actual evidence. It's why we might ignore compelling data if it contradicts what we hold true, or why we might accept weaker arguments that support our views. This happens because what we already believe feels comfortable and safe, making it hard to accept new or different ideas. Recognizing belief bias can alter our approach to decision-making. When encountering a new idea that challenges our worldview, instead of instantly dismissing it, take a moment to critically assess the evidence. This shift towards evidence-based thinking can enhance our ability to make informed decisions, promoting a more open-minded and rational approach to life's challenges. Ever wondered why, despite having more freedom and choices than ever before, we often feel less satisfied? Welcome to the Tocqueville Paradox. In the 1830s, Alexis de Tocqueville traveled to America to understand why its democracy was so successful. He discovered something profound. As people gained more rights and equality, their expectations increased, making them feel more entitled and less content. So, what exactly is the Tocqueville Paradox? It's the phenomenon where increased freedom and equality lead to greater dissatisfaction among people. Why? Because as our choices expand, so does our awareness of what we don't have, fueling a perpetual sense of longing and disappointment. But here's the kicker. Understanding this paradox can actually empower us. By recognizing our endless pursuit of more, we can learn to appreciate what we have, focusing on gratitude and fulfillment from within. Imagine applying this to your daily life, choosing to value the present moment and the freedoms you do enjoy, rather than what's missing. That shift in perspective can transform your sense of satisfaction and happiness. Ever felt overwhelmed by a mountain of tasks, ending up procrastinating even the smallest ones? The key to breaking this cycle is called the two-minute rule, a strategy that can transform the way you tackle your to-do list. Consider the famous artist Pablo Picasso, who could sketch a masterpiece in minutes. Picasso's ability to start and complete a piece swiftly illustrates the essence of the two-minute rule, the power of beginning. If Picasso waited for the perfect moment, those iconic sketches might never have existed. The two-minute rule is about tricking our brains to get started on something by committing just two minutes to it. If a task takes less than two minutes to do, you should do it immediately. This rule leverages the psychology of task initiation. Starting is often the hardest part, and by reducing tasks into two-minute chunks, we make them less daunting. Applying this rule could be as simple as sending that email you've been postponing or organizing your desk. Once you start, you're likely to keep going, turning a small action into significant productivity. Ever wondered how just a single shift in your mindset can unlock an immense pool of creativity and problem-solving abilities. Welcome to the Curiosity Zone, a concept that can revolutionize the way you think and act. Picture this, Leonardo da Vinci, in the Renaissance era, not just as an artist, but a visionary inventor. His secret? He lived in the Curiosity Zone. The Curiosity Zone is essentially a mental state where curiosity, rather than fear or bias, drives your thinking and learning. It's about asking why and what if relentlessly, allowing you to explore possibilities without the constraints of conventional thinking. Now, imagine applying this in your daily life. Instead of accepting things at face value, you question and explore, leading to innovative solutions and deeper understandings. For instance, facing a challenge at work, instead of going with the first solution that comes to mind, you dive deeper, asking questions, exploring different angles. This not only leads to a more effective solution, but also enhances your critical thinking skills, creativity, and ability to tackle future challenges. Ever wondered why 20% of your efforts actually yield 80% of your results? This phenomenon, known as the Pareto Principle, is the key to transforming your productivity and focus. In the late 1800s, economist Vilfredo Pareto made an intriguing observation. 20% of the pea pods in his garden produced 80% of the peas. Intrigued, he applied this observation to wealth distribution in Italy and discovered a similar pattern. Roughly 20% of the population controlled about 80% of the land. 
This principle, now named after Pareto, has been found to apply in various areas of life and business. It states that a minority of causes, inputs, or efforts often lead to a majority of the results, rewards, or outcomes. Applying this to self-improvement, consider focusing on the 20% of habits or activities that will give you the most significant benefits. For instance, if you're trying to improve your health, identifying and concentrating on key exercises and dietary changes can yield most of the benefits. By embracing the Pareto Principle, you're not just working harder, you're working smarter, optimizing your efforts for maximum impact. Imagine the possibilities when you apply this to all areas of your life. Here's why admitting, I don't know, could be your greatest strength. This isn't just about being humble. It's about a powerful concept called epistemic humility. Consider Socrates, who famously declared his wisdom came from knowing he knew nothing. This wasn't defeat. It was the beginning of true understanding. Epistemic humility is the understanding that our knowledge has limits and being open to new evidence or arguments. It doesn't show weakness. It demonstrates strength and flexibility of thought. Adopting this mindset can revolutionize the way you approach problems and interact with others. It's about embracing the unknown, asking questions, and being open to new perspectives. Imagine tackling a complex challenge at work. Instead of charging ahead with assumed knowledge, you pause, consider what you don't know, and seek out new information. This approach not only leads to better solutions, but also fosters a culture of continuous learning and growth. Epistemic humility isn't just about knowledge. It encourages a mindset that's curious, open, and unafraid of the unknown. It's how we grow, learn, and ultimately, how we improve ourselves. Ever felt stuck, waiting for motivation to strike? This is where the do something principle comes in, a game changer in overcoming procrastination. Consider Thomas Edison, who didn't wait for inspiration, but actively pursued his experiments despite facing countless failures and setbacks. He never waited for the perfect idea to strike. Instead, Edison embraced the do something principle. He continuously experimented, learned from each failure and kept moving forward. This relentless pursuit led to revolutionary inventions like the light bulb. The do something principle is a simple yet powerful concept. Action precedes motivation. Taking any small step towards your goal then fuels further action and motivation. Let's apply this to self-improvement. Imagine you've been putting off exercise. According to the do something principle, you don't wait until you feel like working out. You just start with something small, like a five minute walk. This small action can lead to more significant efforts, transforming your fitness journey and by extension, your life. What small step will you take today to propel yourself forward? Have you ever found yourself thinking, I've been unlucky so many times in a row, so I'm due for some good luck soon? This belief is known as the gambler's fallacy, and overcoming it will change your approach to risk and decision making. In 1913, at the Monte Carlo Casino, something extraordinary happened. The roulette wheel landed on black 26 times in a row. Gamblers lost millions betting against black, convinced that a red was due next. The gambler's fallacy is a psychological trap, where we mistakenly believe that if something happens more frequently than normal, during a given period, it will happen less frequently in the future, or vice versa. Understanding this teaches us how our perceptions can cloud judgment. If you faced repeated failures in personal goals, you might think you're due for a win. Instead, analyze why past attempts didn't work and adjust accordingly rather than relying on luck to change your fortunes. Each decision should be made on its own merits, not influenced by previous unrelated events. By overcoming the gambler's fallacy, you can make more rational decisions and increase your chances of success in all areas of life. Ever puzzled over a tough decision because of unknown outcomes? This is the Ellsberg paradox. Understanding it can transform the way you make decisions. In the 1960s, economist Daniel Ellsberg uncovered a curious pattern. He showed that people fear the unknown, affecting decision-making. He demonstrated how people prefer options with known probabilities 
over those with unknown probabilities, even when the odds of success are the same. Why? The fear of the unknown often outweighs rational judgment. The Ellsberg paradox is a phenomenon where individuals avoid uncertainty due to the lack of information, leading to decision-making that isn't always in their best interest. But embracing uncertainty can empower you. By acknowledging the unknowns and focusing on what you can control, you can make more informed and confident decisions. For instance, an entrepreneur might face uncertain market conditions, but can still succeed by focusing on product quality and customer service, leveraging the Ellsberg paradox to their advantage. Understanding the Ellsberg paradox teaches us to navigate life's uncertainties with confidence, making smarter, strategic choices. Let it inspire you to face the unknown, turning fear into your strongest decision-making tool. Ever aimed for a goal and lost track of why? This phenomenon, known as Goodhart's Law, reveals a twist in how we pursue success and improvement. It shows how targets can mislead us. Back in the 20th century, the Soviet Union aimed to increase nail production. They set targets based on quantity. The factories then produced millions of tiny, useless nails. When the target changed weight, they made huge, impractical nails. Neither approach met the actual need for varied sizes of functional nails. Goodhart's law states that when a measure becomes a target, it's no longer a good measure. Because we then start to game the system, focusing on hitting numbers rather than achieving real progress or quality. By focusing on numbers, we forget true goals. How can this benefit us? Don't just count hours studied or books read. Aim for understanding and applying what you learn. By choosing meaningful goals over mere numbers, we achieve real growth. Goodhart's law reminds us it's not about how much we do, but the value it brings. Why do we often want something more when we're told we can't have it? This is not just stubbornness, it's a psychological phenomenon known as reactance theory. Take the story of Steve Jobs. When he was kicked out of Apple, the company he co-founded, instead of retreating, Jobs used this setback as a catalyst. He founded Next and Pixar, paving his way back to Apple with even greater innovations. Reactance theory explains our pushback to threats against our freedom of choice. When Jobs was told he was no longer needed at Apple, it triggered a motivational surge to prove his worth. So, how can this theory help us? It teaches us that when faced with restrictions, instead of giving in, we should channel our reaction into a positive force. Like Jobs, use limitations as a launchpad for creativity and innovation. The next time you're told you can't, remember it's your signal to soar. Use that no as a step to your next big yes. Ever delayed opening a piece of mail because you knew it was a bill? That's the ostrich effect at work. Consider the tale of Ludwig van Beethoven. Despite losing his hearing, Beethoven refused to ignore his situation. Instead, he faced it, adapting his methods to continue composing. His determination led to some of the most profound music ever written, like his Ninth Symphony. The ostrich effect is our tendency to avoid facing our problems, like an ostrich burying its head in the sand. Yet, Beethoven's story teaches us the value of confronting our challenges, no matter how big they seem. How do we overcome the ostrich effect? By not shying away from our difficulties. Ignoring problems doesn't make them disappear. Acknowledging and tackling our issues head-on can lead to breakthroughs and achievements. Let Beethoven's courage inspire you. Next time you're tempted to avoid a challenge, remember that facing it could be your step towards creating your masterpiece. It's time to face your fears and turn them into your strengths. Why do we often argue over things like the font in a report more than its content? This preference for trivial over complex issues is known as the law of triviality. Picture the British Navy building a nuclear submarine, yet the committee spends most of its time discussing what to stock in the canteen. It sounds absurd, but it's a real example of how we often focus on trivialities when faced with overwhelming complexity. The law of triviality highlights our tendency to devote disproportionate time to trivial matters, ignoring more significant, complex issues because they're harder to understand. So, how can we combat this in our lives? By recognizing when we're focusing on easy, 
inconsequential details instead of tackling the real challenges. Prioritize tasks by importance, not by ease or comfort. Notice when you're sweating the small stuff at the expense of what truly matters. Breaking free from the law of triviality can lead to more meaningful discussions and decisions in both personal and professional life. Ever held on to something just because you didn't want to lose it, even if it wasn't benefiting you? This instinct is called loss aversion. It's like the story of Kodak, a giant in the photography industry. Kodak invented the digital camera, but feared the loss of film sales, so they shelved the technology. This hesitation to embrace change due to fear of loss eventually led to Kodak's downfall in the digital age. Loss aversion is our psychological tendency to prefer avoiding losses over acquiring equivalent gains. It's why the pain of losing $50 feels more intense than the joy of finding $50. Understanding loss aversion can improve our lives. By recognizing this bias, we can make more rational decisions. For instance, instead of clinging to outdated habits or investments because we fear change, we can evaluate opportunities more objectively. Whether it's a job, relationship, or outdated belief, ask yourself, am I holding on because of value or just fear of loss? Start challenging your fear of loss today. Ever felt like you're not as competent as others think? You're not alone. This feeling is known as imposter syndrome. Consider Albert Einstein. Despite his groundbreaking work in physics, he often felt he didn't deserve his accolades, calling himself an involuntary swindler. Even the brightest minds can doubt their success. Imposter syndrome is that nagging thought that you're a fraud waiting to be exposed, despite evidence of your capabilities. It's common among high achievers who can't internalize their success. So, how can we beat it? First, by recognizing it. Understand that it's a common experience, not a true measure of your ability. Next, share your feelings you'll find many feel the same way. Remember, overcoming imposter syndrome starts with accepting that perfection doesn't equal worth. Next time doubt creeps in, remind yourself, I am capable, I am deserving, I am not an imposter. Your achievements are valid. Like Einstein, you might doubt yourself, but that doesn't diminish your contributions or your competence. Ever noticed how tasks expand to fill the time we allocate to them? This isn't just your imagination. It's a phenomenon called Parkinson's Law. Think about the last time you had a whole day to do something that realistically only needed a few hours. Chances are it took you the entire day, right? Parkinson's Law states that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. A classic example is the preparation for a meeting. Given a week to prepare, the task will stretch out to consume the whole week, often with last-minute rushes. But we can use Parkinson's law to improve our efficiency. By setting tighter deadlines for ourselves, we can trick our brain into focusing and completing tasks more quickly without sacrificing quality. Next time you have a project, cut the usual time you'd allocate for it in half. You'll be surprised at how focused you can be. Embracing Parkinson's law can transform the way you work, making procrastination a thing of the past.